The Assassins Part 2 The Assassins went for the head of Sunni Islam. Numerous notables, viziers, and generals perished at the hands of assassins or fidayeen poison cups. Nizam al-Mulk, the Grand Vizier of the Seljuk Sultan Malik Shah, was first among those killed. Unquestionably, Nizam al-Mulk was one of the best governors the Muslims had ever produced. His well-known work Syasat Nama, which was written in Farsi, is a masterpiece of political and administrative art. Nizam al-Mulk was responsible for giving the Seljuk ship a secure anchor. He founded colleges and universities where some of the brightest minds of the time taught. In addition to constructing hospitals, roads, and canals, he also supported the military, stimulated agriculture, improved tax collection, and supported both domestic and foreign trade with China and India. The Seljuks prospered, and Baghdad once more rose to prominence as a global metropolis. Al-Ghazali, one of the most illustrious academics to have taught at Baghdad's Nizamiya College, changed the direction of Islamic history with nothing more than the power of his pen. Universities were not merely excellent institutions of higher study. They served as propagandist hubs for the beliefs of their funders. Similar to how the capitalist and socialist perspectives were reflected in the social sciences taught in the United States and the Soviet Union until recently, the political rivalry between the Abbasid and the Fatimid Caliphs was reflected in the respective teachings of the universities in Baghdad and Cairo. The Fatimids founded Al-Azhar in 969 CE, not only as an excellent institution but also as a hub for Fatimid propaganda. The universities in Cairo were opposed by those in Baghdad. In addition to being a fantastic place to study arithmetic, language, and fiqh, the Nizamiya College in Baghdad served as a hub for Sunni Islamic counter-propaganda. For instance, we see a parallel dialectic against the Fatimid perspective and against the secular challenge of philosophy in the writings of Al-Ghazali. 1111. The death of Nizam al-Mulk in 1091 dealt the Islamic world a grave blow. Not only was the Seljuk Empire's immense centrifugal forces accelerated, but the Seljuks were also denied the services of a first-class administrator. Famous Mosul emirs Muhadud, 1127, and Zengi, 1146, as well as the Atabek Imaduddin were also victims of the Fidayeen. Salahuddin Ayyubi himself nearly evaded the assassin's dagger twice more a century later. Unlucky for him, Delhi's conqueror Muhammad Ghori passed away in 1206, near Kabul, at the hands of an assassin. The assassins were repeatedly attacked by the Seljuks, but each time, they managed to flee. It took the Mongols, led by Halaku Khan, until 1251 to eventually overrun the assassins' homelands and drive them from their lairs. The Mongols were en route to Baghdad, the very center of Islamic civilization, thus this was of no comfort to the Muslim world. Despite the Mongols, the Fidayeen survived up until the present day in isolated areas of northern Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Following the First World War, when the Ottoman Empire was defeated, these regions were occupied by and protected by the British. Seljuk dominance waned after Nizam al-Mulk's passing. Small principalities were formed out of the huge Seljuk Empire, which stretched from Kashgar, China, to Jerusalem. Open conflict resulted from disputes that erupted between the princes and the emirs. The Crusaders poured their influence into this calcified Muslim political system in 1096.